Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Times Radical. So today, we're here in the new office, Times Radical office, dedicated space for the YouTube channel. And I'm going to show you how I set this place up, the tools I'm working with, and the next projects I'll be getting into. So let's go. Let's just show you what I got here at the office. It's a new chapter for the Times Radical journey. And I thank everyone for watching, liking, subscribing. So here is the ultrasonic cleaner. All these tools I've accumulated over the last 10 years help save space in the house. And now I can have a, a real space to actually use these tools. So I just have uh, one of these generic case openers with all types of attachments. I even have the Rolex attachments here. We have this um, classic BB crystal press. All this stuff I accumulated and bought on eBay. Here we have a little pressure tester. Another crystal press, which I don't like, but we're still keeping it around. Um, here we have a cleaning machine. One of these um, Watchmaster cleaning machines. This one's uh, from Bulova. Have my demagnetizer. I have a uh, nice Ray Foster lathe here and the Fordham lathe. Have some attachments I've yet to hook up. We have this nice view of the parking lot where I have a great little parking space. And actually one of my friends um, manufactures chocolate just right down, down there in one of these garages. So that's pretty cool. Here I have a little charging setup for the electric bike and all the tools I'm gonna use. And here is the bench. And this is some awesome uh, Turkish rug I acquired at an estate sale. So also be doing some estate sale videos because uh, like for instance, this sight set, I, I got this at an estate sale and this is like a super complete sight set. So if you don't have a Horia tool, you can use the sights. So I've actually been accumulating um, over the years, a double of every tool because I'm working at my uncle's shop for the last 10, 12 years. And I've been, um, I need my tools there, but I also wanna do my own projects. Um, closer to home so I don't have to commute as much. So let's see what this bench has and then I'll show you the next projects we're getting into and we can um, keep going on with the channel and tell me what you think and I'm going to be going over some upgrades as well. For instance, this bench I got is from Ikea, so I'm gonna be weighing it down with some with some books and keeping some computer stuff and I have the some of the polishing wheels I'm collecting. But I'll actually need to be bolting this Ray Foster lathe down to the table so that uh, it doesn't move when I'm... Okay, so let's get into some of these bench tools. Now, I'm still accumulating some of these bench tools because like I said, I have, uh, I have a lot of work to do at my uncle's shop. So 
I keep all my bench tools there, but I've been accumulating all these other tools over the years. And this is actually some stuff I found at an estate sale and I haven't opened them up yet either. So let's see, it's been a while since I looked at these. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, I got really lucky out here in the East Bay, Berkeley, I found an estate sale. They it was from an old jeweler. So this is a uh, truing calipers for when you're um, doing a balance staff replacement. Some old uh, peg wood. It's probably pretty good. We have. Ooh, a little tridor tool for the um, balance shock springs when um, you do the old stuff. It has a little um, three piece locking system. And we also have the pith wood. Um, and the old pith wood and peg wood is much better than the new stuff. And I have all these scratches on my hands from my cat who um, will be making some appearances. But we have a nice graver. This was just some stuff I, I decided to buy because oh, a nice little pin vise. So these are just some of the tools that will be going into the bench when I do um, some watch repair projects. Now this sight set, I got super lucky to find um, found a real complete one. This is so dope. Nice, like a jeweling tool. Now this, you adjust here the height that you want to press it down and it'll stop. Um, and it even came with, uh, you know, all these pushers, reamers. You can open up holes. It's, it's for replacing jewels. And you can also do some staffing on this if you, you know, completely open it up, remove this. And you can hammer it. Boom, boom, boom. But um, for, for staffing and um, riveting, I prefer this uh, staking set. Now this staking set, let me show you here. It's actually an old uh, Italian one uh, from Cremona. It's got this cool uh, old school decal. And it is just so awesome. Another complete set. I bought this thing on eBay, about 150 bucks. So this is where you could do your riveting, your, um, your rotor axles. And if you're unfamiliar with this, with the staking sets, then let me just show you how it works here. So when you're doing um, staking work on a watch, for instance, you might need to break a um, rotor axle out or a balance staff out. And you put the piece, the piece that you're breaking, it needs to be a little bit bigger than the hole you're using. And if one of these holes isn't um, the right size, then you might wanna get a stump. You can also use this to knock out broken jewels but I prefer to kind of press out broken jewels rather than hammer them out. Um, but what you want to do, you want to line up one of these holes and you unscrew this piece right here and it'll loosen up this block. Then you can um, find the center with your centering stake. You can lock it up and then You'd want to find like a punch that that can um, that's flat and 
can center right onto the piece that you want to punch out. And so you'd put your oscillating weight here, you'd have your rotor axle lined up for the hole that's a little too small. And then, um, let's see if I have a hammer here, actually. Yep. And then you would just take your, your hammer and boom, whack it. And then the rotor axle would actually um, compress and the edge of the rivet would go inward and push through the hole here and it wouldn't damage the hole in the oscillating weight because um, the it would just crumple up inwards. Go th the rivet would break, crumple inwards, go through the oscillating weight and down through this hole here. And then when you need to um, rivet the new one in, you would recenter it for the big stump. <clears throat> Through the big hole, and then you would take your flat stump, put your your new oscillating weight there, put your new rivet there, put your oscillating weight over it, and then you could take um, then you could take one of these stakes here where you would uh, you know hammer it again and re rivet it. And now this is cool because it also has a little, um, the screw down sleeve actually tightens up the stake. So this was a cool uh, little staking set I decided to buy. I have a, a more complete one at, at my uncle's shop, but that's just because it's better for the work that I'm doing there. But this is just gonna be for the fun stuff I'm working on for the channel. Okay, so let's get into some of these drawers and see what we got. So we got the sights set. We know that. We got the little generic puffer. Got my old screw driving set. Have my time grapher staking set, little cup oiler, which is super dirty. I have these uh, old school tools here. And <laughs> this was the old uh, Pocket Tripod Pro I used in the first videos. Got Rodico's files, um, a little bench block, um, and some parts. Got a little note from my girlfriend here. That's the nicest thing I've ever seen. Um, I got my uh, oils, a little super glue. I got some gaskets, little lens cleaning tools. We got some, um, We got some gravers here. This is for doing work on a lathe. Got my rinse dish. I have um, some stones for screwdriver sharpening. Oh yeah, I got the um, some real nice calipers here as well. So that'll come in handy when I'm um, Doing some crystals. As well as um, some more files, some rotor axle punches. I just got a bunch of little things in these next drawers. But, and this is cool, this little catcher. So when you, if you drop your parts, you can catch it here. And let's see what else we have. Oh yeah, we have a little hand pusher tool here. I got a 
find all these pieces. Oh yeah, here we go. These two drawers have a lot of cool stuff. So this was from my uh, SADA certification. Um, I got my plastic tweezers. Um, just some little attachments. This is for the um, for the Horotech tool for pushing hands. Um, we got levers. Um, we have the tips. I got some cleaning baskets. I got some old hands. Um, now let's take a look at this. This thing is something supposed to be a screw head polisher. I made in a, the watchmaking course. Um, well, I was really ahead in the class and I uh, ended up being able to do this project. I, I wasn't able to do it perfectly, but um, it's, it's good enough. So what you would do is you'd get your stone, put it here, and then you would adjust the height and then you can squeeze your, your screws down in there and then you could polish your screw heads. But what this thing works is pretty good. Um, you can put it like, a, I use it to remove balance uh, hairspring studs. I clamp the balance bridge in here. You can remove screws from links. And it's just kind of a cool little thing that I was able to make. Also, something else that I found in the bench were these old, Look at that, 2011. These are, this is what you do. You do a lot of filing, a lot of lathe turning. But I think that this is the, this was the awesome little thing. This is when I really found that I was getting better in the school. And I do not know where it is. I'm a little disappointed. These are some balanced staffs and stems we made. Oh, here it is, here it is. Don't worry, this is, um, <laughs> these are just some hand tips here. This is when you learn how to use the Tap and dies, different thread sizes. But the cool thing is that I wanted to show you is this. I'm so glad I showed up. This is a hand filed cube. And I put this line finish on it. And the edges are just super sharp. It's really nice. It's about, uh, it's, it's pretty much 10 square, uh, 10 centimeters, no, 10 millimeters. So it's about a centimeter cube. all around 10 millimeters each side. Okay, so let's get into, since 
this shop is a little bit limited. I don't know. For me, I would say that just getting started, I'm limited um, at the shop because uh, the bench tools just aren't quite there. I need some new tweezers um, because all I have are plastic ones. But, um, you know, we can do a whole bunch here. But now that I've shown you all, now that I've shown you all those old projects, this is going to be um, one of the new projects that I'm getting into. Now, um, since I'm a little bit limited in my um, bench tools, um, we're just going to be doing some uh, Seiko mods here. And if you want to keep watching those, then this is what we're going to get into. And this is from uh, Toke Labs. And I also ordered some stuff from um, Namoki Mods. So I do have a link in the description for 10% uh, off. No, 5% off. I think the 10% off is expired, but 5% uh, off uh, the Namoki Mods website. But Toke Labs is really dope. And I just got this in uh, today. Super awesome box. And I'm gonna just show you one by one. what we got going on over here. From Toke Labs. So I got a bunch of ideas that I wanna get going on building these watches. So let's see this. So this will be for a date sub, black dial. Very nice packaging. This style will be for a no date sub blue. This dial looks like no day sub black. This dial will be for actually a GMT. This is like a sub dial with date, but this has the minute track. So I'm gonna use this for the, the GMT. So those are four dials that I got um, from Toke Labs, but I'm getting um, the cases I'll be buying from Namoki. They just haven't shown up yet. Oh, and I have this. Ceramic bezel insert, kind of a Pelago style. So I'm gonna be doing some really cool um, mods here soon at the shop 
just so I can get used to uh, the workflow. I have um, these Snowflake Tudor style hands. I have a silver, um, black, blue, and uh, black GMT. So those are gonna be the new, the first projects I get into here at the shop. And I kind of made a little bit of a mess of the bench, but that's okay. So, I mean, going over the whole inventory, it's, it's pretty good. I guess all I really need are some tweezers. Um, I need to bring more of my polishing wheels here. I need to um, mount this lathe down. Um, I did grab some more things, an estate sale, <clears throat> got some, um, some pliers, and I'd like to get a steam machine. So after I'm done ultrasonicing bra bracelets here, I can um, steam them in the sink, and I'll have these uh, tweezers to hold the pieces with. And if I need to like um, manipulate bracelets or something, I found some little pliers. So, so yeah, we have a pretty simple shop set up here. Um, you got my staking set for riveting movement pieces. You have the sights tool for jeweling. We definitely have some um, balance staffing things. I would need to get, you know, balance stops are such a, such a trip. I need to get um, my poising tool. Um, so I get some tweezers, poising tool, um, mount the lathe, um, do a couple test runs on my movement cleaner here. And yeah, just fill up this with water. I might need some new attachments. Some, it'd be nice to get some plastic um, dies for the crystal press. Um, I don't know, looks like I'm doing pretty good. So got the bracelet and case ultrasonic cleaner here. Movement cleaner there. Polishing tool here. Jeweling, staking, Timing, hands, probably got some uh, movement holders somewhere in here as well too. Yeah, so so we're doing pretty good for basic shop setup. And like I said, this clears out a whole bunch of space in my house. So, you know, I thank everyone for watching. And keep watching if you'd like to uh, see how these modifications go. And I'll probably be selling a couple of them when I'm done. And feel free to contact me if you have anything you need to be worked on. I'll be working um, at my uncle's shop as well as doing some work here. So that's about it for the new shop setup. And I really thank you all for watching and hanging in there with me for this episode and this new chapter in Tom's Radical. Um, stay tuned in for these Seiko mods. We'll be uh, comparing um, some of the Moki cases with some AliExpress cases. And uh, yeah, this is just a really basic shop. You can set one up yourself just like this. It took me a little while uh, because I go a little bit slow. But yeah, let's talk about, um, you know, the final inventory. I've got the bench tools for the movements. I've got polishing lathe for the cases and bracelets cleaning machine for the movement cleaners. I have a pressure test for cases, case press, case opener, bracelet and case cleaner.
Also, the furniture I got, I've had this bench for a long time, it was given to me by a local jeweler. They were cleaning some stuff out. And, but I got this bench at Ikea, and the cool thing about it, it raises and lifts. It's like a trestle bench, and it's really sturdy, and you can even weigh it down with uh, some cinder blocks if you were going to be doing some, some heavy polishing. And uh, same thing with this. This is more solid wood, and you could really weigh it down by putting some um, weight into the bench. So, you know, if you're looking to do something like this, uh, just check the links in the description. Um, and you can definitely take advantage of the Namoki Mods website. Um, I do have a 5% link there. That's where I'm getting most of my stuff when I'm doing these modification watches. But um, I am looking forward to doing some more uh, serious work here, more in-depth stuff outside of the, the mod work. Um, I'd like to um, put refinishing um, aspects onto some of these cases that I'm buying to make them have a look more of my own. Um, just, you know, this space just opens up, it just opens up a lot more possibilities for this channel and uh, the work that I, I want to do personally to show you guys. I've been doing mostly Rolex watches at my uncle's shop and that's all good. Um, but how much of that do you really want to see, you know, and how much of that do I want to film and edit and do? That's what I need to do to just, you know, pay my bills. But I'd like to get into some fun stuff. I like to make my own watches and I want to show you guys uh, how you can do it and uh, what you need, or what you don't need also. And you know, maybe you like the same style of stuff I'm making, but the thing is with the modification watches, it's just there's so many, um, there's just so many things you can, so many combinations you can get. You have your cases, you have your bracelets, you have dials, hands, movements, colors, and it, it, there's just so much room for anybody to get into it. And when you're doing the mods, it's a lot easier um, to get into it. You don't need to know too much about how the watches work. Um, even though it's really interesting when you get into some in-depth repairs, but until um, the shop is set up and I'm uh, used to that technical type of workflow, we're just be doing some simple things here. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching once again, and uh, <laughs> you know, keep it radical. Time's radical.